was alone. Chris took an immediate and deep dislike to the skinny red rectangle. Who the hell did this Thomas think he was? Chris had been doing fine. He wasn't the highest jumper, but he'd held his own. He'd even been graceful at times. Well, not actually, not technically graceful. It's probably, probably the wrong word, but, you know, fine. There was that skinny little runt leaping about like he owned the place. Okay, this was more like it. A glowy white thing. Only Chris could get to it, which of course made it all the more enticing. What would it do? What new opportunity might this switch open up to him? Great, great. Another chance for Thomas to jump slightly higher than Chris. How fortunate. Seriously, this made the whole switch pressing thing entirely worthwhile. Was this good? Because, on the surface, it did not seem good. Chris was pretty scared. Little Red seemed fine, happy to be on his merry little adventure. Chris couldn't shake the feeling that things had taken a significant turn for the worse since Thomas had joined him. Sure, he'd been able to piggyback his way to ever so slightly higher platforms, but where had that got him? Well to ever so slightly higher platforms, which was sort of his point. Chris stared at Thomas with pure hatred. He seemed so very happy at their situation. Friends together, a brave fellowship of quadrilaterals on a quest for greatness. That would be fine. But it was all the obvious observation that Thomas was doing which grated. Every time they saw something vaguely new, Chris would hear a satisfied little hmm from the vaulting idiot. He hoped the next portal would split them up, if only for a few levels.
John knew. He knew that this was his chance, a moment to shine. This was game day. This would not do. John needed room to show off his exceptional skills. As it was, he was trapped on the wrong side of these little dot things. Where did they come from, anyway? John inhaled the air of the open space, and it smelled of awesome. Time to flex those muscles, to put his training to use time to show those little dots how it was done. John decided to press the switch to let the little dots catch up with him. John cared for his new allies. You could tell from the sympathetic expression he practiced in the mirror all these years. John inhaled the air of the open space, and it smelled of awesome. Time to flex those muscles, to put his training to use time to show those little dots how it was done. John decided to press the switch to let the little dots catch up with him. John cared for his new allies. You could tell from the sympathetic expression he'd practiced in the mirror all these years.
John was happy to keep helping. He felt it was important to his image that he was seen to help the little guys. He didn't mind them so much either. The red one, Thomas, had a charming way of applauding every time John jumped. The angry orange one was less immediately likeable, but his unremitting cynicism and tutting amused John.
This was interesting. A floating target. This would require coordination, balance, and timing. John was sure the dots would be lost, but he was happy to guide them to triumph. Maybe that's what the dots were for. They were there to extend John's reach, to make his performance even more impressive. John liked the thought. He decided to keep them.